Welcome back to Red Lining. How are you going, Rich? Oh, guys, so good. And do you know what we didn't mention last week? What's that? The sexy new sign we've got. Oh, yeah. yeah. We've got a new sign. But before we show you the new sign, which you clearly saw last week, I'd like to introduce you to Di, a.k.a. Delicious. Welcome. Hello. Nice to be here. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. And behind Di is our sign. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Nice sign. Oh, yes. That's a cool sign. That's so cool. So that'll be with us and the show and also behind our DJ gigs. Yes. Yeah. So, Di, welcome to the show. Um, how are y'all going? I'm good. Good, good. It's been a busy time. Yep. Um, lots of good stuff happening though. Yep. Yeah. Lots that's, of gigs. That's always good. Lots <laughs> yeah. of gigs. How are you How are you finding at the moment with, because um, obviously you're a promoter as well, and we'll talk about your uh, brand in a bit. But let's kick off with um, how are you finding at the moment sort of doing promotions, trying to get people into uh, events? Is it is it tough? Is it is it uh, sort of working for you at the moment? Or it is tough. Um, definitely is tough. I think it's always a learning curve as well when you're first starting out a new brand for mm. um, a gig and learning that it's kind of normal that you don't get loads of ticket sales until the last minute. So even though it's great practice to get a date in the diary and a date in the calendar and yeah. promoting throughout that time, sometimes you'll have a week where it's just not going anywhere. So yeah. yeah, we've kind of, the whole ticket sales thing is interesting because a number of promoters that I talk to, you know, do ticket sales and something we've done in the past is, you do do tickets, but essentially you don't really sell that much. Or if you do, they will come in the last day. Yeah. So it's a little bit like you don't you don't know how many people are going to come, and it's, it's always a little bit uh, nerve wracking until the actual day. Oh, absolutely, it's always very stressful. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's just for everyone in hospitality, though. I mean, places are shutting like wildfire. Yeah. I see Madame George on K Roads closing down. That was a nice little hole in the wall. Yeah, SBQR's gone. What's the uh, ch chapels going? Anyway, but anyone, the hospitality and just entertainment in general is just mm. struggling, and yet they keep boosting their prices up phenomenally. Yeah. Dex. I guess they're trying to make up for it. I don't know. Yeah, who yeah, knows? It's hard out there. So, what? how long have you been DJing for? Uh, Actually, uh, do you just DJ or do you also produce or I what you do? I do production as well as DJing. Yep. Yeah, so DJ for 20 years now. Yeah. Looked back at some dates and makes me feel old. <laughs> 20 years? You don't look like a day over 21. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> so you, you would have shut up. I know. So you would have seen that going back to the promotion thing, you would have seen the difference in promotion like 20 years ago. We didn't have social media. Like everything's completely changed now. And now we've got social media, which is an absolute curse on society. But it's handy <laughs> yeah. when it comes to what we do, which is promoting ourselves cheaply when you, when you can do it right. Um, how did you start off with, uh, with promoting yourself as a DJ 20 years ago? That's a good question, actually. I think it was just reliant on a poster going up in a record shop. That's it, eh? Yeah. yeah. Or um, Biggie or NZ Rave, like back yep. in the day. Um, Bebo yeah. was some of the early... Gosh, I yeah. really show my... <laughs> <laughs> I know, I actually have a marketing degree and I have the textbook still because yep. I'm a hoarder. Um, and there's no mention of social media. Yeah. And that's, that's crazy. Have you still got some of the old flyers that you were printed on? Yes. Back in the day? Yes. I had some old flyers. I had a look at them the other day. I did use them all like once <laughs> in a wallpaper in one of my flats, which yeah. was quite cool. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, no, I don't still have them, unfortunately. So what made you pick up... Well, so you learned on vinyl, right? Yeah. So what made you pick up uh, DJing? DJing... Um, I've always been musical, so... Learned the piano until oh, yeah. mid teens, did the violin, did recorder, as most people I suppose have done. Recorder. <laughs> oh my god. It was a thing in there. We all did recorder, eh? Right? Like New Zealand school. primary schools. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, but a recorder is not music. It's a fucking noise. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, it's recorders are the only instrument uh, designed to annoy the shit out of every parent. Fuck, it's nothing like three blind mice on a recorder yeah. to really get you going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're right. Drive you mad. So Violin, my son brought back a that? recorder like, at the beginning of the year, and we were like, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> so my wife went and hit it. <laughs> anyway, sorry. So you went from recorder okay. to violin to piano. What? Yeah. Yeah. And then I was also a dancing teacher, so just very musical oh, wow. okay. and Sweet. into rhythm, and yeah. Um, so when I was at uni, didn't play the piano anymore because that was not cool. Yeah. Uh, needed an outlet, really. Yeah. And just the friends that I was surrounding myself with were 
you know, DJs and had the opportunity to yeah. try it out and I just loved it. So were you a clubber first? So sort of like yes. used to go out and enjoy yeah. electronic music. Yeah. When did you start getting into electronic music? What were your f- earliest memories of sort of going to electronic music clubs? Uh, so I would have still been at school, actually. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Um, so, yeah, late seventh formish, um, going into Wellington. Yeah, um, yeah. Phoenix was definitely the place to be. Yep. And going there after going to all the other bars around Wellington it was such a difference in terms of the people that were there, the smiles, the friendliness. Mm. You weren't getting like sleezed on all the time, which was a big bonus. So, yeah, yeah that was it. And then also just the energy of the music. Yeah. So what, yeah. what, what was your first genre that you started playing, that you started getting into? Hard House. Hard House. Yeah. Oh, yep. Yep. Rumor Fever. Yeah. Um, Faction, Twisted, all of those Wellington gigs. Yeah. yeah. When oh, did yeah. you make a transition from Wellington to Auckland? So I actually moved And to what was in between, London. sorry? If yeah, was. I went Wellington, then London. Yep. Um, and I suppose that's when I changed the genre because the people that I was around in, in London at that time were all into electro. It was around yep. that time. Uh, yeah, that would have been a thing in the early 2000s, was it? Uh, 2007 was when I moved oh, okay. over, yeah. Yep. Um, eight years in London yep. and then thought, Auckland's where it's at. Really? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Auckland? <laughs> what? There's a record scratch in there, eh? Hey? Yeah. <laughs> well, I suppose really? it's to do with my career more than anything. Okay. Oh, okay. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah, right, 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 right. Okay. Well, I got it. Specif- yep. you, yeah. didn't, you didn't go to the ministry and sound go, do you know what? I reckon Auckland's a better night out than this. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon Kay Rhodes got it over this. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I never lived in um, Auckland when I was younger and growing up, and everyone talks about that nonstop about the good old days. So I kind yeah, of missed okay. that. Yeah. Okay. All but, right. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. How was the yeah. cultural shift between Wellington and Auckland then? Um, it is a little bit different, I suppose. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. In what way? Uh, Wellington is more chill. You know, yeah. you don't have the bars where you've got to be dressed to the nines and. Oh, you know, okay. Like, yeah, yeah. Is it more studently? Or? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Also. I know, they're just, just more chill generally. I quite like the yeah, yeah. faster paced um, life in the corporate world, so oh, okay. Auckland suits me quite nicely. So I guess if you're talking from a, a, a kind of employment career type <laughs> move, yeah, I guess Auckland would be. I met, I met a guy last week at a club I was playing at who insisted Wellington was a better night out than Auckland. I don't know, I can't judge because I haven't been to Wellington yet, but... Mm. He said uh, everything's just, yeah, probably what you were saying, a little bit more laid back and mm. um, maybe some of the clubs are more underground, you're more likely to get decent everything's more under- down yeah. there. Everything's more underground in Wellington. I bars, think in terms of the underground bars, from what I hear as well, Wellington is yeah. definitely better than Auckland. Like bars are popping up. Yeah. Here, yeah. you know, bars are closing down, which is a shame. I think it's different. It's different culture. Well, like the culture yeah. down there is much more, arty is the wrong word, but... It's just a bit more uh, communicative, whereas Auckland's just a bit louder and bigger and thinks it's Sydney or thinks it's somewhere else, mm. whereas Wellington has a sense of what it is. I've always felt that. Yeah. Like, I enjoy going out in Wellington more than here, but I just think it's a case of grass is always green on the yeah. other side. It's probably, I mean? it's probably less Sydney and more Canberra. <laughs> and, oh, I'm yeah, going to get for that. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, he's more Melbourne, I think everyone says. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So go back to the music. So... What made you transition from all the other things you were doing, piano and fucking violin and all that sort of stuff, to actually doing something a little more, you know, electronic and digital? Uh, I suppose it was just the next step and being a performer as well. I love that vibe and yeah. the energy. Mm-hmm. Um, such a buzz. And yeah, you know, yeah. as DJs, you, you know what that feels like. And it just grew from there. So mm-hmm. once, you, once you're passionate about something, it just... yeah. So when, when, when you started DJing, you started DJing vinyl, but we were on the transition. Uh, what sort of year was that, actually, before I go into my next um, question? 2003. So we were starting to transition from vinyl to CD. What made you decide that you would start on vinyl? Because I did the similar thing. I, I started in 2004 and I said, I'm going to do vinyl, mm-hmm. even though like people were starting to transition to CD just because I, I wanted to do it the old school way. I wanted to learn the right way if there is a right way of doing it Mm. so is that the same for you or no not really I think um, it never was an option that I had considered when I first started it was vinyl or or vinyl and CDJs had started to come in but not around me and and, um, so much as vinyl was Um, the day that I transitioned to CDJ was actually um, the catalyst was the gig in London 
um, got asked to play at the Ministry of Sound. Wow, um, cool. On CDJs, so... So you've never you used know. CDJs before and, and you're playing them. How the hell did that go? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I, to this day, it's probably still the most stressful time. <laughs> I was surprised. But, yeah, it was, it was good, though. It was good to kick out the bum. So um, you, managed yeah. to, you, you, sort of, you managed to sort of make it work? Yeah, so I was living in Singapore at the time I got asked. So then I knew, okay, when I yep. go back to London, hmm. I'm going to buy CDJs because yep. I needed to do yep. that, teach myself how to use them, practice every day, Practice mm. like three times a day for yeah. the week or two leading up to the gig, mm. and then what was your, sorry? What was your um, gap between uh, being asked to play and actually playing? I think it was about six weeks. Okay, six weeks to learn a whole new. Skill. That's pretty good. Yeah. Well, I think at, at, to a level because yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. I mean, everything's obviously a lot bigger in the Ministry of Sound. Were they like one thousands? Uh, 900s and I've still got them <laughs> oh really I don't okay. use them day to day but yeah. I've still yeah. got them in the cupboard oh, they are okay. good to bring out and a lot of friends who learn to DJ always ask to borrow them oh, yeah. what um, year was that 2010 2010 mm-hmm. so you supported Roger Sanchez I did wow that's yeah. amazing yeah 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 cool yeah, it was that's cool. pretty cool funny story though when I rocked up after practicing on CDJs for you know six weeks was mm-hmm. that in the baby box room they had DVDJs and oh, I, yeah. I had never seen or heard of them till that day, and I actually haven't seen them since that day. But that was an interesting experience. Yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah, what was yeah. DVD just, just more megabytes to store music on? Or? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, think, I, yeah, basically the Mark III 1000s had the DVD capability. So, yeah, you could store more music on. But I'm, I'm just wondering if they had actually had a video. Because ca- the CDJ did, I'm pretty sure I could be wrong. And you can comment if I am wrong. But I think at some point the CDJ had a video capability in it um, to do with VJing and stuff like that. Could be wrong. No, I think you're right. But yeah. I, think, yeah. it, I yeah. think that was the Mark III that sort of introduced that. But then, yeah, it just disappeared yeah. again. I guess with technology as it went, yeah. you know, you went into USBs and yeah. stuff like that. And if it sounds like Richard is talking out his ass, write in the comments below. <laughs> <tell us exactly. laughs> DVDJs. He's Actually talking out of his ass again. He's talking out of his ass. <laughs> <laughs> So creating music, let's get into that. So that's the interesting stuff. So when did you start dabbling and creating your own stuff, your own sound? Um, well, I started a long time ago just because of the people I was um, around. So cool Edit, I think, was one of the applications yep. back in the day. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and Fruity Loops as well, actually. Yeah, cool, hold on, Cool Edit, Cool Edit Pro. Yeah. Oh, wow, okay. So I, used to, <laughs> I used to use that for audio editing. Yeah, Sorry, so it's now audition. Yeah, that's old school, eh? Yeah, yeah. Still use that, yeah. Oh, wow. So a okay. long time ago, but that was just mucking around. I think yeah. I'd remix some tunes with Sesame Street samples in it. And cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> you know, it's always helpful to build your skills from something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, then obviously didn't touch it for a very long time and then was keen to get back into it because I think as a DJ and if you've got that creative passion and if you've got ideas, then the best way to be unique and, and grow mm-hmm. a career if you want or even just follow a passion is to start making music. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what kind of music did you make? What kind of style? Um, the first track that I produced was Progressive House. Yep. And then I easily fell back into what I find more, um, well, it's not easier, but just natural, I suppose. Mm. <laughs> and I've produced about six or seven hard house tracks since then. Oh, yeah. But um, I've got about 10 unfinished techno and prog house tunes on my computer, which I... Would love to finish at some point this yeah. year. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you, do you, have you had stuff signed? Yeah. So, yeah. what labels have you had sign stuff signed to? Uh, so, um, most of the tracks that I've completed have been signed by one, which I probably won't release. Um, went on uh, Meltdown Records, the first one. Um, which this is was, the hot house stuff. This is the prog house one. Oh, prog so house again, one, it was right, quite yeah. different for Meltdown. They, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, they're more well known for hot house. And then after that, I had a a few tracks released with the um, engineer who helped me with them yep. on um, Unbounded tracks. Oh, yeah. Cool. Um, and a few others as well. Mm. Yeah. So is that mainly what you produce now, like kind of melodic, progressive house sort of stuff? Uh, so I, I suppose I'm a true multi-genre yep. DJ. Um, for example, when I go and do my live streams on a Tuesday, I sort of stand there 30 seconds before I'm supposed to start thinking, hmm, what do I feel like playing today? Yeah. So I love all genres, yeah. Yeah. Um, very dependent on my mood or um, energy levels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I'd like to continue to produce music across all different 
Yeah. Once, yeah. Where do you sort of get your sorry mate? Where right. do you get your inspiration from when you come? So like you're you're gonna you sit down and you're gonna go right. I'm gonna produce a track. So where do you start? Um, I, I tend to get inspired by things without thinking about it. <laughs> you, I'm watching the sound of music over the Christmas holidays, thinking mm. you know the overture and things. Oh, yeah. I could make something that's quite different out of that. Um, or just going down a rabbit hole on mm. SoundCloud. Mm. You can find some artists that. Uh, not known at all maybe they've had five plays of this tune that they yeah. started singing and they've got a cool voice or a cool yeah. sort of lyrics or something that just is different so i quite like that inspiration yeah hmm. yeah, yeah i'm cool. just hearing doe a deer a female deer with the heart <laughs> out of the, yeah. In the background. yeah you just wait <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how a lot of inspiration does come from films right oh yeah totally you know everything right. i do is like based around some sort of film yeah you know it's cool. yeah there's some That's good cool. samples of quotes and things like that. Yeah. Which come out of yeah, definitely. Like, yeah. Especially yeah. in the hard house genre. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They love a good sample in that, don't they? Oh, yes. Oh. It's good. It's good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You said that some of your song, your tracks were went to a um, label. What's the process? We've talked about it before, like people getting on labels. But we've never actually talked about what the process is. Like, did, do they find you? Do you approach them? How do you get something put onto a label? Uh, I think it's definitely approaching the label. Yeah. So you want to do your research and figure out which is the best for a myriad of reasons. You know, has it got the right sound? Has it got the right reputation? Mm. Um, are they professional? And it mm. depends what you want as well, like what you want your personal or DJ brand to be associated with. Um, do they do marketing? Um, so then you could approach mm. them and send your tune over a bit of a blur behind the tune and who yep. you are, what the benefits would be for them. And yeah. then they would say, no, nah, it's, you know, doesn't have enough vocal in it or sorry. Yeah. Or they oh, don't so they respond. feedback and then, on sort yeah. of elements in the track. Yeah, I, I would say mostly that, yeah. yeah. So how much in your sets when you play out, how much of your own stuff do you play in your sets? Well, I don't play hard house sets out very often. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So, and I don't have um, many other genre tunes at the moment, so right. yeah, okay. well, depends on what yeah, yeah. gig it is. Fair but enough. live stream, if I was playing Hard House, I would play all my own tunes, because yeah. you just want to get them out there and get them known. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's good. So, you live stream, you just mentioned you live stream. Um, so, tell us about that. Is that a legacy from the pandemic? Um, yeah, so Lockdown Legends was a group that was started back in 2020. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of grown and changed and you know, it has different focuses than it did then, that's for sure. But I'm, I'm still involved and I like the fact that it's a large group of people that are like-minded and you know, they've got a similar passion of music yeah. and community and it's a great way to share gigs that are coming out or tracks that are released. Um, there's a relatively good level of engagement in the group mm. still. Um, and so that part of that is the live streams, um, which yep. is a, a weekly schedule. Um, it's just great for new DJs that are trying to uh, start and get better or grow a following. Yeah. Um, I use the live stream every week to force myself to have a mix because life is busy yeah, 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 and gotcha. if I didn't then yeah, I, yeah. it would maybe be a month that I'd go without mixing yeah. so it just keeps me on my toes and buying new tunes all the time and it also ultimately means that when I do have a gig it's just it's not such a, yeah, a scary yeah. event because yeah, it's just yeah, yeah. normal yeah oh yeah so so do you have the um, the setup for live stream? So you bought the setup for live streaming. So what do you do? Just like chill off your phone, or is it? Um, have you got a camera? Um, just a web camera. Oh yeah. And a microphone. And then you just link it up to uh, what is it? Twitch? Sorry, not Twitch. It's Twitch. Twitch. Yeah, I've never live streamed. <laughs> Twitch is like a, it's like a gaming. Um, oh, it's like, like a follow along thing. You can like yeah. get a group of friends together and run the yeah, world. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a platform for a lot of gamers use it. So you can watch people play games, yeah. But like DJs use it as well, just like you know, live stream and stuff like that, and you can comment in it and yeah. So on it's been around for a long time mm. um, with the gaming community. Yeah. Mm. In fact, you can do a lot of things on Twitch. People, you could live stream anything. In fact, I always look at the um, there's a <laughs> there, well, an example is there's a few nature live streams. So there's oh, right. one that is just following 
ducks in nature. Amazing. Yeah. And they have you know 500 plus viewers at any one time. And then I'm doing my DJ set and maybe have you know 50. <laughs> you know, <laughs> who doesn't want to watch a lot of ducks? Oh, exactly. Ducking it's, around. I know. That's weird. It is. But you get like this. It's those, it's those niche things. You get onto a niche and you get like like I don't know feet. And it, like it's a niche thing, and it's like, like what, what's what are they? What's that thing that people pay to watch people? OnlyFans. Only fans. So you get an OnlyFans, and the most popular ones are apparently uh, <laughs> feet. And I'm like, wh- why? Why feet? Actually, I yeah. kind of like feet. But anyway, no. It is interesting. There's some that I think you, you can watch people sleeping. Yeah. Have you seen Tickled? No. Oh, you Who's that. oh that's a uh, David Farry. That, yeah, that's one. Yeah. yeah, I should watch Tickle. That's really good. Oh, like people into weird shit. People into weird shit. That's so good. But it's about like people paying people paying to people to tickle them. Yeah. <laughs> What's the weirdest thing you would pay someone to do to you? <laughs> what well, to me? Yeah. Not What's tickle. It? No, <laughs> not tickle. Tickled. You guys got a weird. I haven't, I haven't got anything. I can't think of anything off the top of my head right now. Weird. So, what was your question? So, you, what would you get? What would you pay someone to do? Yeah, to what's you the get? weirdest thing you would pay someone to do to you? Weirdest thing. Weirdest thing. Weirdest thing. <laughs> That's a really big question. It is a big. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so when you, we'll come back to that. <laughs> yeah, later on. I'll have to think about that. It might involve custard. I don't know. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Ooh. Anyway, so no. Go. <laughs> Everyone's minds are going. Hmm. Okay. What are good? If you've got anything that you this would do, fucking pay for this one. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right down in the comments, what you would have? What's the weirdest thing that you would have someone pay? What would you pay someone to do? That's the weirdest thing. That's the fucking I'm terrible at this. You got it. Okay, good. Now, sorry, we're not usually like this, though. No. <laughs> it's been a long week. <laughs> <laughs> Next week's like custard edition. Uh, lockdown legends. <laughs> Yes, lockdown yeah. legends. So, do you do what's the longevity of lockdown legends? Because you, you like um, they actually put on a few promotions. As well, they played at Om last year. They had a, a stage at Om. Did you play that? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. How was that? It was awesome. Yeah. Did yeah. you play sort of more? Old, do, that, do they kind of play more old school stuff, or is it just like whatever that DJ plays? Um, at lockdown legends. Uh, 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 yeah, at on Om. the Om stage. Um, yeah. we had our own lockdown legends stage. Yeah. That year, so. The DJs that were playing just progressed from sort of house music yeah. through to yeah. techno, and yeah, um, yeah, that was basically it. There was no hard house at home. Oh, uh, okay, no, that's no. a shame. I could imagine there would be. Um, no, it was cool. I yeah. loved it. Yeah, what time great. did you play? Um, I think it was around 6 pm, so it was kind of oh, halfway cool. through the nice. um, the schedule that we had there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 was that on the hill? Yeah, it was yeah. Kind of on the side back. Hill that's quite cool, that stage. That's quite cool. It's kind of tucked away. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. I like those ones. Um, I'm as good. It's just there's a bit of a amount. I had, I had, when I went a few years ago, I had this thing where I just kept bouncing behind, between stages and then by the end of the night I was knackered. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't sit on the stage. I was like, oh, this is cool, but what? I'll go to this one. I think, yeah, this is cool. I might go back to that one and that one. And then I couldn't find the hub. And I was like, oh, I'm sure the hub's here somewhere. And I couldn't find it until I decided to go back to my tent. And then, ah, oh, that's where it is. <laughs> well, that's yeah. almost died. Anyway, another shit story. Um, it's good for step count. Yeah. What other gigs have you played at? Like you've done Om, um, like, what Kiwi gigs have you jammed at? Um, so in addition to Lucid Underground, obviously, um, the, well, the one memorable gig was in Wellington. I played at a fever. <laughs> then uh, I was looking at a photo and it was... Um, I think I was 22 years old. I looked very nervous. Oh, right. Very young. What gig was that, sorry? In Fever in Wellington. Fever? Yeah. Is that to do with Eamon? It is, yeah. It is? Oh, Eamon, he's a legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He, he knows some stories. So you've played, um, you've played for uh, uh, his promotion a few times? Because he, he oh, does Hard House. Yeah, yeah, he does, yeah. 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 No, that was a very long time ago, but that was um, one of the gigs that I played at in Wellington. They yeah. had um, Twisted, and there was a few yeah. smaller ones in the top room at Phoenix that mm. I played at. Oh, yeah. yeah but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, going back to those days, it was all hard house vinyl, so yeah. you know, I had yeah, bigger yeah. biceps to carry around my crates with me. But they, uh, yeah. are you, because they're doing the, the hard house reunion in a couple of weeks, aren't they, at the studio? Yes, Are you going yeah. to that? Yeah, 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 every year. That's an awesome gig, yeah. Are you playing at that? No, no, Oh, no. okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, it's a studio in a couple of weeks. I think it's, is it yes. beginning, it's either end of August or beginning of September. Of September oh, yeah. is it mid, middle of September? Well, yeah. yeah. Is it a weekend gig or week? Uh, oh, yeah, weekend. It's Saturday, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. Could be keen. You should. Well, we're, Eamon did sort of mention something to us about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk oh. to him about that. 
Yeah. Um, so Lucid Undergrounds, yeah. how did that start? So that's your promotion, that's your brand. How did that start? Yeah, so I think it was at a party at my house at the time, um, group of friends and um, just got chatting and had a shared vision of wanting to play out more. Yeah. So one way of doing it is of <clears throat> sending in a mixtape to some promoters mm. or why don't we just start our own gig? Yeah. We can choose who we want to play with us. <laughs> so yeah. it's kind of how it was born. And yeah, just like-minded, good friends. And it's just worked. It's just gelled. And we've been quite successful over the last three years. So, so how, how often do you throw parties? Um, we don't like doing them too often. Otherwise, it kind of yeah. dilutes the, the specialness of each mm. one. So Plus, we're all getting too old. <laughs> yeah. okay. So probably four or five a year, I yeah. think. Yeah. And That's spreading cool. out to different locations as well mm. so yeah so where, where what venues do you usually find them at uh, so we've done a lot at Fitzroy oh yeah um, at, been at Ahu uh, Woman Bar and Ink Bar yep. most mm. recently yeah it was good yeah yeah shame about the Fitzroy isn't it it used to be such a great venue for house music yeah yeah, yeah. is yeah. there anything moved in there now no I don't know actually I haven't been down that way how's Ahu doing anyway is it cranking well, there's always a lot of gigs on. Yep. I haven't actually been out a lot recently because I've been moving house, so I've been trying to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shift boxes rather than uh, yeah. going out. But, uh, no, so there's always stuff on, and mm. they're really good on their sort of social media as well. So, yeah. you know, the post when things are happening, so people, and people tend to be last minute, can, you know, decide to go go down and go out for a boogie. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, 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 absolutely. So what's the, what's the best place that you like playing at the moment? What's, what's a regular one for you? Well, I've always loved Ink Bar. That's always been my favourite. Yeah. Um, as a punter, and that now yeah. is you know on the other side of the decks is was great, mm. and we've got a few more coming up at yeah. Ink Bar, which is cool. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's a great venue. Yeah, yeah. So going back to creating music, when you're because you've you play several different instruments, do you incorporate that into your production as well? Yes, I like to add in sort of native normal sounding yep. instruments just as a point of difference yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Any, so, anything in particular i've tried a few different things and i like just mixing it up but yeah. you know saxophone or some orchestral kind of violin-y sounds yeah, 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 yeah. haven't tried recorder yet though so oh maybe, there you go no, this is trick go on three one. blind mice is on the cards <laughs> 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 have you heard shitty flute on yes, youtube I was about fuck to it's the best day <laughs> Yes. Shitty flute is so good. Yeah. Oh, I think I've missed that. I'll have to check that out. You no, no, look at it. it That's good. The best one is Aha Take On Me, Shitty Fleet. It's <laughs> the fucking funniest thing ever, I swear to God. And then, oh, there's so many. And, they keep um, releasing them too. That's yeah. really popular. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. And the Titanic song, what is it? Yes, um, My Heart Will Go On. on. Yes. Fuck, it's the best. <laughs> Shitty flute. Let's Shitty have flute. A look then. Honestly, it'll make it, it makes my day. Every yeah. once in a while, I'll hear one and I just fucking crack up for ages. Yeah. It's so good. So what, where, where do you get your inspirations from? What uh, Apart from, because obviously you've got a, 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 an educated palette when it comes to music. Where else do you get um, inspiration from besides other electronic music? I think um, working with other you know, artists and producers is, is really beneficial. Yep. Um, not only with music, mm. uh, creativity and inspiration, but learning the tools, you know, learning how to use this really complicated software yep. um, is... You know, it's hard to do on your own. I mean, I watch yeah, YouTube yeah, videos yeah. for hours trying to you know, learn all the yeah, 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 yeah. Um, details of things. And yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, I don't time. know how this is going to come out. I don't even know if we can play this on our podcast, but I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> you never skip through. You're better off getting the build up and then it hits you. I had more of a reaction when you skip through. <laughs> I don't know what song that is. You can't take on me. Take on me. Uh, <laughs> that's the best. I love the fact that it's. Oh, another good one's Africa. It Toto starts Africa. normally. Yes. Yeah. It starts normally, and you're like, yeah, cool. This isn't going to yeah. be impressive. When it kicks. Yeah. Like, you got the little. It's definitely like, the the drop, should we say? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, come on, wait for it. Here it comes. Uh, it's excellent. There's two of them. Uh, there's two of them. It's a duet. 
Wouldn't that be a cool job, though? Oh, Actually, wouldn't yeah. it? <laughs> they must make a fucking killing, eh? So, one of the comments, let's read them. The demons I see in my sleep are dancing to this. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. That's a bit. I spent literally hours one night just listening to that shit with a friend of mine, just cracking up. It's so good. It's it so is, good. Yeah. Do you know how many yeah. views that's had? How many? 13 million. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Yeah. yeah. Do you know how many, my, how many more than our podcast that is? 13 million. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Should we bring the recorder next time? Yeah, yeah, yeah please. Yeah. We should do shitty podcast. <laughs> shitty podcast. Yeah. I think we do a shitty podcast anyway. Shitty podcast anyway. Yeah, exactly. It's not yeah. working. Isn't there yeah. like popular restaurants that do that overseas? What? Like bad service? Have you oh, heard yes. of those? There was yeah, one, yeah, yeah. There's, one, really there's one in London. I didn't go to it, but I heard about it. And I think it was called, it was a Chinese one. I can't remember what it was called. But you, you went in there because the service was so bad. Yeah. And they put you on joint tables and they'd throw the menu at you and you'd go can I have a drink no eat first drink later okay yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but like it's yeah it's a, it's a thing there's a bakery in France that's owned by two fat French women and they call it like the two fat French chicks or something like that and they are just horrendously rude but they when they first opened up that was just how they were it wasn't it's not an act yeah. that's them French right <laughs> and they were just Horrendous. And people go there now to buy, and apparently the food is incredible. Yeah. And you get it on time and all that sort of stuff. But the, the process of getting it, you just got to take some abuse. It's is the food good? Awesome. The food's good. No, apparently it's amazing. Well, it's, yeah. it's simple. It's bacon. Because if the food bacon. was shit, then what would be the joy? That would be the point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's, apparently it's amazing and it's worth it just to get abused by these women as well. <laughs> anyway. We should start abusing people in our, on our, in our shows. Yeah. Why? You should get up on stage, get a microphone and say, you're all a bunch of cunts. No. Oh, do it. Yeah, With so, the Saturday. There you go. Right? Yeah. Saturday. There you want to say that? Mike Shules. Why not? <laughs> get me up there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we'll be invited back. Have you dabbled? Actually, that's the point. Have you ever dabbled in, like when you're actually on stage and you're doing the DJing, um, live? picking up a microphone or playing something live on stage as well as just mixing things together um, so this is uh, yes but um that was kind of by accident there's been a couple of times many years someone ago. accidentally put a recorder in your oh, hand I, someone <laughs> someone um, managed to acquire a tambourine and join the band oh wow right. and got yeah thought that that was amazing that the band members didn't think it was so amazing. Oh. <laughs> so I was banned from Danny Doolins for a while. <laughs> Danny, Danny Doolins? Who gets banned from Danny oh Doolins? Oh my God. Yeah. That's like a badge of honour, isn't it, being banned from Danny, <laughs> Danny Doolins? I mean, so, I, sorry, was that a band or was that a DJ? Or a DJ? There was a band there. This is a few years ago. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I so just hold thought on, that they needed a tambourine. A tambourine. Let's, let's recap. <laughs> you got a tambourine, you went on there and started playing. Well, band. I just saw one on the side. I yeah. thought, that, you know, oh. that's not being used, so yeah. they might need to... You know, someone might be ill. I could stand how, how it. Drunk, how drunk were you? Oh, very. Very. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's, a, it's illegal not to be in Dali Doon and sober. Yeah. 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 I'm pretty sure yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 I thought you were going to do, do one of those Will Ferrell moments where it's being over the flute. And he's like, is anyone here a flutist? And he goes, I dabbled. You went with the tambourine. Then I'm play the team. Wow. Yeah. yeah. He's shaking it up. Um, yeah. I haven't been to Danny Dolan's in fucking years. Is it still there? Yeah. It's yeah. still yeah. there, right? Yeah, it's still there, yeah. Still and you never have a bad time. And plus, Danny Dawn's is one of those places where people go, oh, you know, we'll go down to the Vida, like, we'll go to Danny Dawn's, and they laugh, and they go, we're not going to go there, we're above it. But you walk past, you see people having a good time, and it's like, it's going to pop in five minutes. Five minutes, that's <laughs> all I'm going to be. Three o'clock in the morning, oh, right? they, they drag you out. It's the best time ever. Yeah. No, but it's, 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 it's one of those places, you hear it, they, they're doing well. It's what they're yeah. doing, they do it, and they do it well. True. Yeah. Well, if they close down, it's going to be fucking shit. Anyway. I think I've only been there once, to be fair. Really? Yeah, it was oh, horrendous. No. I've been a lot. Especially when I was younger. Yeah. I used to work in the bars down there, in the waterfront bars and all that. And that was the place that you'd go after work. Yeah. And just let your hair down. Anyway. Are you banned as well? <laughs> I've only been once. Yeah. I've been, I've been like, in fact, I went there the f second night I arrived in Auckland in 2010, and I've never been there since. Really? Yeah. Huh. Fair enough. Yeah. Good on you. Thanks. <laughs> I'm proud of that. <laughs> so, you got banned from Danny Dawes. Well played. So, when you were in the UK, what are some of the, what was your, going out experiences like because we've had people in here talking about um uh berlin for example and some of the, the clubs and stuff over there like new zealand we don't really have clubs so to speak but where were some of the places some of the highlights that you frequented when you were over in the uk or even europe or even anywhere else in the world for that matter berlin is pretty cool 
yeah. Yeah, that's a, a really good nightclub experience. They do yeah. it properly over there. So you've been? Yes. Did you go to Bogain? Or down I went the other to, one? Um, Tris- it's called Watergate. Oh, Watergate, yeah. yeah. Oh, Watergate, that's, that's really hard to get into, isn't it? I don't know. Is it? <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> um, not when no. you're on tambourine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Or a shitty flute. <laughs> so what was that like? It was good. It was amazing. Um, if, maybe it was because a friend of mine was DJing yeah. there that oh, managed okay. to get in. Yeah. yeah not sure. Yeah, yeah. This again a long time ago, but that was cool. Um, living in London, went to Ministry of Sound a lot. Um, Matter. I went yeah. there a lot. Fabric. I think I went to Fabric oh, every fabric. weekend in the first yeah. three months that I lived in London. Oh, wow, well, yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was good. Would a big club like that last in Auckland? No, I don't think so. The scene's a bit too small, mm. yeah. I would say. Which yeah. is a shame. But. Yeah. We used to have a few places, like way back in the day, you probably remember, like um, we had Loaded Hog, and then there was Sports, uh, what was it, Sports Cafe? No. What do they call it? Became loaded. It was a massive one on the corner there. It's now Crab Shack. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> um, oh fuck! What was it called? No, nah, it's gone. I'm blank. But there were anyway. There were a few back in the early 2000s. There was a couple of really big clubs, and yeah, they just all dried up. And yeah, I think the biggest one here is like half the size of that now. Yeah. Yeah. I think that there's a few clubs in Auckland. Like Mothership is obviously one that's that's doing really well. Yeah. And putting on decent gigs, underground mm. gigs. Yeah. Um, for size studio um, is a good venue, but isn't that, it's not always open everywhere. It's like you, you, for studio, you do international acts and you like something big. Um, but in the UK, when, um, yeah, when I used to go out, it's like there was always like the regular night that you'd go to. Like there was that one club that you'd go, like you said, you'd go to Fabric every weekend. You, you always knew that's probably where you'd end up, you know? Yeah. And you always knew there'd be something decent there. And But there's not that kind of venue here. Apart from Danny Dawn's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. you always end up. Well, like it's back, to the, it's back to the argument we always say about the generic bar isn't it that plays the same thing like if you want to go down to a bar to get drunk and listen to like pop music I guess you yeah, call yeah, it, yeah. that's your place and they do it very well like so the two, most, the two most frequented places here are probably like HQ and Providor you know and they just play basic bitch Bon Jovi fucking all that old stuff and they just mm. crank it out and it's easy it's safe yeah you know and I think it would be nice to have a place here which actually... Oh, no, we do have places like that. Yeah, but yeah you're right, yeah. actually, you're right. We just we don't do. have the scale here. They're just not... That, that, I mean, the problem is, is that it's education. And, um, like, it, it's about... And you'll know this from being a promoter. It's about being patient and building a crowd and building a following. And a following that always... Whenever you put on an event, they will always come out and know that your event is the one that they want to go to because you put on good music, you're good DJs, it's a good night. You pick good venues, you know. So, and then also not saturating the market either with, you know, doing it every week, which which is silly if you think about it, because like, you know, we used to go out every week when we were younger. So why 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 is it that we can't do it every week? It's because most of the people, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, most of the people that come to our gigs are kind of our age, and yeah. they can't go out every week, right? But yeah. when we used to go out as twenty year olds. 30, you know, late 20s, early 30s, and we could go out every week. It was cool to have that consistency. Yeah. So why are the young kids coming up not listening to electronic music? Because they've got entertainment in their hands, most yeah. probably. Social yeah. media, like yeah. we didn't mm. have that. They don't need to go out. I've seen images of, of like photographs and stuff from um, clubs and that in the 90s, and no one's looking at anything but the DJ or the band or each other. Yeah. And it's so cool. And it just takes you back and you remember it, right? And yeah. the only annoying thing were people who were blowing on whistles in clubs. <laughs> but, it's just as bad as the recorder. Yeah. I'm drinking your water. <laughs> Shitty whistle. <laughs> but, you know, there was something, everyone was attentive and everyone was present at that moment. Yeah. Whereas now they're either looking at the phone, looking for the next thing or, you know, what's the next best thing that's about to happen, which they'll probably look at their phone at anyway, mm-hmm. looking for the next best thing. Yeah. Or they're recording it. Who the yeah, fuck is going to look back on that? Yeah, yeah big, that's the thing. You know? Big concerts and yeah. watching the gig through everyone's phone in front of you is just... That's such so bullshit. Do, do you find when you're DJing that people record you while you DJ? 
and you sort of go why you know just like enjoy the moment like, or do you go clearly yeah <laughs> yeah exactly yeah <laughs> Um, I suppose in the you don't know this, maybe. in the sort of clubs that I'm DJing at, you don't have that kind of no. behaviour. Um, people are there to dance or yeah. out, you know outside smoking. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and also I think our age group is different, so yeah, we're true. not standing there with phones because that's not what we want to no, be yeah. doing. Nah. Yeah. Plus, also most of the stuff that we go to is not visual. Like, there's no visual element. Like, we're not going to watch Fat Boy Slim, who's got some massive thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah. you're going to, everyone's just going to. That's more of a show, isn't it? Yeah. For show, it's like yeah, a show, yeah, it's a yeah. Whereas yeah, all we true. do and see, or hear, yeah. is predominantly, you know, music yeah. based. I think that's the great thing about Ink Bar, actually, is that um, it's an environment where it really is all about the music. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, it's a great vibe. The DJ's kind of tucked. Uh, it, I wouldn't say the DJ booth is centre of attention at Ink Bar. You know, it's yeah. it's kind of next to the bar. It's a cool little booth, yeah. and um, people are just there to enjoy the music and dance. Mm. You know, yeah. Um, yeah, it's good. It's you kind of a kind throwback. Of whatever isn't it? you want, you yeah, know, yeah, exactly. Jeans yeah. And a black t-shirt or whatever. And yeah, you yeah, yeah exactly. It's mm. good. It's got a good vibe there. What is the? Because um, you're you're in, you're in marketing. What is the hardest part of marketing gigs and stuff at the moment? Like, is it an oversaturation? Is it, uh, what, 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 what would you say it was? I think, well, the social media aspect is always hard. Like, keeping yeah. up with regular posts and engagement and, yeah. you know, content, you know, coming out with different content that mm. is going to make people like it or yeah. share yeah. it or yeah, comment yeah. on it yeah. um, is hard. And, and everyone's trying to do the same thing. And, you know, you hear... Yeah that posting regularly is good and so you, you know lots of posts and then when do you have the time to do that and <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it's so it's making sure you post at the right time and all this shit it's a science behind it eh? it is yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. there's a gazillion yeah. videos on youtube telling you when and where you should post yeah. at what time yeah. to who yeah what kind of content what you should be doing in the text what's on the thumbnail yeah AI is pretty yeah. good to an extent of helping Sorry, out what? AI using AI. Yeah, yeah. So how do you use um, yeah, how do you use AI in your marketing? Uh, so obviously the copywriting or the crafting of the posts is useful. Yeah. You've got to curate it a little bit, otherwise it's very obviously AI written. Yeah. Mm. Um, with too many exclamation marks and too many emojis and things like that, I <laughs> find. Um, so it's good to give it a good prompt. So yep. For example, when we do our Lockdown Legends weekly live stream schedule, I'd always yeah. use chat GPT just to add in some sort of creativity or flavor. Mm. So I say, yeah. this is the schedule for the week. Yeah. The theme yeah. is Pirate Week, whatever it might be. I want you to give me a post that would accompany this poster talking yeah. like a pirate with a few puns. And then it comes out <laughs> with something that you like. All right, just try it again and then... <laughs> There's a bit to unpack there. Yeah. <laughs> Pirate week. So well, what's that that was, a, that, was, that, that was a fictional example. Yeah. But, I'm uh, curious now. I want to well, I did Olympics. To it was it. Olympics week last week. That right, was in charge okay. of. Um, and so a similar thing, you know, I need a creative post to accompany this yep. poster. These yep, are the yep. DJs that are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. Write something with their name included in it and throw in some Olympic themed jokes so right. it did that, and I think the joke was something like, um, why is there no DJing in the Olympics? Because DJs don't like breaking records. Nice. That was, that was good. I'm hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I've used Meta Business as well. That's quite good because yep. you just post it once and it goes to Instagram and Facebook. So do you use a tool that, there is a tool out there that will post to everything so you don't have to do... Yep. Like multiple. That's the other thing is like I always find that when we post, so we post to Instagram and then we post to Facebook, but the tagging is different. So you tag everyone in Instagram, but the Instagram post will go to Facebook doesn't tag the people you want to tag. So I find I have to repost it to tag all the people I want it to tag in Facebook too. Yeah. You know. And it's all ironically the same fucking company. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah, certain elements of the metaverse 
communicate really, really well. Yeah. And then other ones like that yeah. so have the same thing. And then you can't post links in Instagram, yeah. which is frustrating, on a reel, yeah. which is frustrating. Yeah. And they change the sizes of the images that you yeah. post and you can't, oh, yeah. That's a wind and I, up. It's a constant challenge. It is. And I think the, uh, I was talking to someone about the content that you put out on Instagram now, like we put a lot of video content on. And as filmmakers, um, I've always, when I make videos in the past, I've always like appreciated a little bit of a, um, you know, like like a tease, you know. Now you just got to go bam and get someone's attention in two seconds. Otherwise they're going to go, whoop, whoop, crap, yeah. crap, crap. Which is a shame because it kind of takes the art out of filmmaking. Mm. Do you, you guys have TikTok? No, I have it. Yeah. Because I needed to, it was more like research. Like I had to get it just to see what other people were doing. And I was putting stuff up, but the stuff I was putting up was just shit that I'd do from Instagram and then yeah. transfer it over just to have some sort of presence. Mm. I haven't touched it in about a year. Do you, do you, um, your tool that posts everything, does it post to TikTok as well as Instagram and everything at the same time? Or do you have to do it separately? Because they're obviously a different company. Um, well, there is some sort of enterprise level platforms that you can use mm. that post to a lot of different things. I think one of them that I used to use in my job um, did everything apart from LinkedIn. And I think some now actually have LinkedIn as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think does because anyone use LinkedIn? I do every day just in my role. Oh, okay. um, so it's definitely a, a different audience than what I would do to promote yeah. myself yeah. as a DJ. Of course, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I want to use LinkedIn, but I just feel like LinkedIn's just a whole bunch of people looking for work. Everyone's just <laughs> scamming work, you know? And they're like type something. That, or, or people who are looking for work or people who have got work and they feel like they need to just tell everyone this big wellness thing that they're on. And I just, I don't know. I mean, I use it and I'm on it, mm. but I'm, you know, that's what I find. It's just constantly people... Look at me. So, so tick, TikTok, do you find, what's the engagement comparison between TikTok and Instagram? See, I, I haven't taken the plunge and got TikTok oh, yet. Oh, okay. All so, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I probably should. See, t to me, TikTok is just something that's designed for kids or people who've got nothing better to do. So, like, the content that you get on TikTok is really, like, lowest common denominator. People with a phone just filming themselves talking shit and posting it. I say that. And it's actually that sort of stuff that gets the most engagement, yeah. uh, bizarrely enough. But it's also designed and made that it's just constant. It's un, you're unable to put it down if you're into it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And people yeah, just scroll and scroll and scroll. I've been yeah. amazed how many adults our age or older have gone like, oh, have you found TikTok? Mm. And they're on there for like hours. Not even, that's not hyperbole. They're in there for hours scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And it's just sugar for your yeah. eyes. It's the worst. And it's just rubbish. Because you know, you know that the TikTok we get in the Western world is different from the TikTok they get in China, right? Uh, did no. not know that, but go on. So TikTok in the Western world is what we see, you know, mm. total rubbish. Crap, 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 crap. Where in China, it's incentivized right. that they show people with skills, people who are winning, people, kids, adults, whatever, you know, yeah. this person got a degree in whatever, this person mm. broke a record in something or blah, 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 blah. And you're not allowed to use it after 10 o'clock at night. And oh, it shuts down. Oh, yeah, really? that TikTok. And it's, it's a Chinese app. Let's not forget that. Yeah, yeah. So they, um, they yeah, completely different rules. Mm, it's also brainwashing, but normality, right? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I reckon, mm. like, evolution, you know, how we're obviously, <laughs> depending on who you believe, uh, we all evolved from, you know, apes. But as evolution carries forward, you know, we're going to grow extremely strong, big index fingers where we're going to be <laughs> scrolling yeah. on our phones like that. And in a hundred years time, we'll have a hand with a finger this big. Yeah. Because of all like the fucking like scrolling that we'll do. I think yeah. Actually, yeah. I, yeah, it'll be hunchbacks, like hunchbacks yeah. 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 I actually think genuinely, I think, I think people who are making the most money at the moment are chiropractors and osteos because of that. I think there's yeah. a genuine thing in yeah. that, like people looking down all the time because we're not meant to do that. And the other one is our eyesight's fucking up. Yeah. You know, because... We're not looking in distances anymore. Yeah. It's all like this. Oh, it's horrendous. Like over the school holidays, my kids were up and they had two friends around and I went up there to their lounge bit upstairs and all four of them were on devices, not engaging with each other at all. One I was on a tablet, one was on a phone, one was playing the Xbox and the other one was, I don't know what he's doing, on, on, his, on his phone maybe. And yeah. none of them were engaging. And I said, you invite your mates around but you're not talking to it. Oh, we are. We're talking through the phone. And it's like, <laughs> oh, my, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, so like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but it's the same sort of thing with going to gigs and people not paying attention and people just there for any other sort of narcissistic reasons rather yeah, than Yeah, look at me. Yeah. DJ, who's this guy? I don't know, but I'm taking a photo with him. I'm having the time of my life. <laughs> yeah, it's Weeping great. on the inside. Folks, yeah. who, who are you again? 
Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, tag yeah, yeah. Oh, you got fifty friends. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what has been the most successful uh, medium for you to actually uh, market yourself on as a DJ or promoter, like social media wise? Um. Well, personally, I probably maintain my Facebook profile DJ page more so than anything else. And yep. I think that's just because I had it first and it was easier. Yeah. Um, I should be using Instagram more. I think that's probably where there's more engagement but mm. I mean I don't have the stats to prove that and I should probably yeah. do, do some more but yeah I mean everyone's too busy to do stuff a lot of the time so yeah. I find yeah, it yeah. hard mm. it's become almost as difficult to promote yourself as it is actually create the music now because eh? it used to be back yeah. in the day that people would promote for you they would you know have labels or magazines or it was, it was just a smaller part and you hope people would turn up but now there's that pressure on you to actually be that good at that it's the same with a lot of other industries especially mm. in entertainment yeah. you know you've got to be promoting yourself I mean I'm a, I'm a director and a producer and I just make content right um, documentaries or whatever the mo- it's almost as important to be doing behind the scenes shit for short form behind the scenes mm. than it is actually creating your art mm. you know and it's awful I fucking hate it yeah you know? yeah. but it's important and you've got to do it now if you don't do it you're going to fall behind and yeah. get yeah. noticed That's one good thing about the meta business is that you can schedule posts so yeah. in an yeah. I- ideal world on a Sunday afternoon with a glass of wine I'd think okay I'll do my social media planning for the week and have yeah. all this content ready to go and, and yeah. Monday then Wednesday mm. and then all yeah. different types mm. and different platforms mm-hmm. the reality is that that hasn't really happened but you know there is an opportunity to do that yeah. if you wanted yeah yeah no it's yeah. true it's true it is so time consuming as well like you go oh, I'll just put a post on Facebook two hours later finally hitting send you know <laughs> it's just uh, mm. I'm like why is that taking so long I've got to tag this person I've got to yeah. do this to it I've got to do oh, and then God. you've got to engage with the comments and the replies yeah. and things you can't just <sighs> sort of post and then forget about it for a week <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> as you can tell Rich is quite burned up by it all <laughs> <laughs> so what have you got coming up what have you got coming up in the future it's, it's, we, we, we're coming up to the hour what have you got coming up um, over the next six months anything of note um, yeah Big Loose at Underground's coming up yep um, we're doing a gig in Taupo over, cool. la- over Labor Weekend. Oh, cool. When's Labor Weekend? Oh, yeah. It's the end of October. Yep. So 26th of October. Where's that? Uh, so Finn's um, bar in Taupo. It's, oh, it's the going. big one. Yeah. yeah. It's popular. It's big. There's two rooms. Yeah. So we're doing oh, cool. a sort of oh, yeah. girls and guys or doing a trip down and hopefully it's more central. So the, yep. Yep. the Wally crew and, you know. Yeah. So you said Fox that was Labor Weekend? Group. Yeah, Labor Weekend. Yeah, well, cool. Yeah. Nice. So that's that. And then I'm also quite looking forward to Tony Fowl's Den next year. Yep. Beginning next year. Yeah. Where's that? I've heard of this one. I don't know anything about it. It's um, uh, Waitangi in February. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah in yeah. Wellington. Or just out in the Wairapa. Yep. Yeah, that's cool. a good that's one, isn't such it? Cool. Yeah. You got a New Year's gig lined up yet or no? Not yet, no. Not yet? No. I'm sure something will come up. There's plenty going on. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. thank you very much for coming along. Thank you for the chat. It's Thanks been fun. Yeah. It's been a little bit different. It's, it's been quite ranty. Waxing it? lyrical. I like <laughs> it. And I'm, I'm so excited that I've now learned about shitty flute so yeah. thanks for that oh dude no you're hooked I am now I'm talking about TikTok being addictive you fucking wait and yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna see what else is on there yeah <laughs> <laughs> so good no thank you very much cool. and thanks, um, all Cheers. the best of luck and uh, we'll see you in the socials <laughs> <laughs> or not man. yeah you will <laughs> or Danny Dolan's good or not oh you're not allowed to